Hello guys, it's Nigel here, Nigel Lagaffe from uh, Nigel's Modeling Bench and I have got another review for you today, yes the third one this week and this time we're back to our Russian stuff. Now there's a little story for me behind this kit. I saw a review today um, done by Bear Hobbies of this kit and absolutely fell in love with it straight away and thought I need it. In fact I commented, I think I'm the first person to comment on there and um, I commented, love it, I'm going to have to have it. So I went straight on the internet and I found that Antics had it and they were just about to close so I couldn't get it but luckily Jonathan the uh, the manager there at the warehouse said he was visiting his daughter this evening if I wanted to drive over there I could meet him there and pick it up so I have just literally picked it up it's half past seven and it's Friday night and it's the 24th of January 2020 so um, thank you very much Jonathan um, once again you're a star and uh, yeah got it great price great service can't fault them so um, anything you ever need get onto Antics and uh, I'm sure they can get it for you if they haven't got it and they will have a go at price matching if they can so this is the Russian Brem 1 armoured recovery vehicle and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm hoping they do the T55 version of the engineer's vehicle because at the moment it's only available as a, as a resin conversion. It's quite pricey and um, I think Trumpeter do tend to bring out the uh, the resin stuff in plastic and uh, it's it's often a lot cheaper. I know they've got the uh, the long wheel coming out, the, um, is it the BMT1 or something, the, 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 the the one that they made the, the trench digger and stuff from and that one's coming out with a great big radar on the back anyway once again I am waffling plenty of waffling today so this is a brand new kit 232 mil long 106 mil wide and a thousand plus parts right I have to stop the camera there if you can hear some funny noises in the background my dog is playing with her chew underneath the bench that this is being filmed on so now and again it's knocking into things so if you hear some funny noises you're not going mad so um Anyway, let's have a look around the box. It's a detail scale kit for adult collectors to assemble. And it says on the side of the box here, 14 plus. Okay. So we've got some CAD images here on the side of the box. Sorry about the lighting is a bit dim. Obviously the gloss is, the box is very glossy, so I need to uh, keep the lighting away. But we've got CAD images of the uh, details and stuff we've got in here. And we've got the, uh, there's the, um, the crane jib. And then we've got the, um, the snorkel there. And we've got some showing us we've got clear parts for our lights and everything. And then here's some history, basically telling us this um, support the T72 main battle tanks. And it's based on a T72 uh, V46 multi fuel diesel engine, 780 horsepower. Um, I've got a kit of the engine, so I may well build the engine and have this lifting it up, see, just like it is on the front. So, um, Anyway, let's see. Um, began production in 84, a total of 342 vehicles were built in 1990. So um, that probably means up to 1990, not 342 built in 1990. So there we go, there's some history about it there. It's got some armament on it as well by the look of it. As you can see, 2019 it is a brand new model and the kit number is 09553. And I must say, I do like Trumpeter's new um, box design. Really do like it. Looking on the side here, as uh, as was mentioned in the Bear Hobbies review, I'm sorry, Mr. Bear Hobbies, I don't know your name, I don't remember your name. Um, but we've got our four um, call-outs here for our colours, and once again, they're the same. It seems that everything Trumpeter do, it's always the same colour call-outs, or they've got some additions, but there's always this lighter green, the darker green, the, the grey, black and um, green, and then the green and brown. It's, it's always those four. So it's a bit weird. I don't know why they've got the light green and the dark green. One, one's an earlier Russian green, I think, and the darker green is the later one. But um, I have to do a bit of research to see what's going on. And you can see you've got some decals and a sheet of photo etch. So uh, without further ado, let's have a look inside. And as I said, I do like this new um, trumpeter layout, the design. They've, they seem to have gone away from the... Um, they had the original red sides, didn't they, on the boxes, and they had the black around the edges, and then it was the light blue flashing, and now they've gone for this. It's very sort of dragon-esque, if you like. So what have we got inside the box? And this is actually the first time I've opened this box. I haven't peeped in here at all. So we've got a little slip of paper here telling us that this is a new model out, um, October to December 19. And then we've got a HMS Kent, a late production truck with a different trailer. And then we've got the um, 
is it a Sam 5 missile launcher and then we've got a this is going to be a smirch this is going to be like a smirch on the back of a Maz truck now be very very careful um, if this is anything like the one before it on the Maz is it the 543 um, this is all out of scale it's too tall so um, check that out check your references and look at the built model um, certainly on the on the Maz 543 when you look at it in, in correct drawings of photographs and stuff the top of the, the top of the um, rocket launchers should be sort of just above the cab the, the cab just above and when the actual model it's right above it it's too big so uh, worth looking at um, so there's that slip of paper then we've got some sprues here which are beautifully wrapped we've got two sprues there you can see we've got the foam and then we've got bubble wrap around that one so there's two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen sprues of gray plastic and we've got all our I think this going to be eight or ten eight sprues brown sprues of track links and then we've got our instruction manual at the bottom here we'll come out with our color codex in between and then we've got the the hull with some goodies in there and we've got some other bits and pieces some slide molded parts and another couple of sprues so there we go we've got two sprues of clear one photo etch and a set of sheet of course so we'll start as normal and we'll have a look at the instructions okay so let's have a look through this uh, instruction manual it's a normal sort of stapled together A4 roughly size book 20 pages 22 steps so uh, nothing too daunting um, I'll start by explaining as normal we've got the um, we've got the legends here so this is giving you your symbols so if you're working through your model and you see a symbol pop up look at the front and it'll tell you what it means and that's obviously for our for our newer modelers out there we've got some health and safety stuff here and this is telling you how to apply your decals so uh, again for our newer modelers so starting here we've got the um, sprue the sprue map and you can see we've got all our sprues laid out here quite a few of them and then we've got our, our seven seven track sprues not eight and you can see we've got some um, brass wire some ducting that will mean it's vinyl hose poly caps decals and photo etch so there we go and these are all numbered so if you do get lost for what parts are you can always refer to this if you've cut them off the sprue and you don't remember what number they were so assembly starts off as normal with the T72s you're going straight into the hull construction and adding some greeblies to the side here and then we've got some suspension arms here this is going to be shock absorber arms and our actual uh, our actual wheel pivots there and then we've got this is telling us this opposites on both sides so it's only showing one side but you're actually doing this on both sides and then we're going to add up our um, idler and um, then we're going to put our main gearbox covers on the rear engine cover it's telling us we need to drill some holes in here and then the idler is going on this side now and then I'm not sure if there's going to be any adjustment there but if you've seen my build of the book um, it's often a good idea to try and leave the idler or the main sprocket off if you've got some adjustment because what you sometimes find is when you put your tracks together you kind of either need one more link and it makes it too saggy or if you take a link out it makes it too tight so I often try and leave the idler out or leave something out and then you can adjust it to suit your tracks when it comes to uh, when it comes to fitting them because again with this this tank um, or this armored uh, recovery vehicle doesn't have um, fenders so you're going to see the whole track so you need to get the correct here we go <laughs> you need to get the correct sag over the top this is what I'm saying if you want that perfect sag you need to be able to move one of these wheels in or out or both of them in or out so that you can get the perfect sag there's nothing worse than having one too many links and it looks like a second world war German tank or have it too tight and it looks like a Sherman so right um, I digress so we're putting our wheels together here with our poly caps which is a nice touch it means we can put them on and off so we can put them on build up our tracks and then we can take it all off together as an assembly and uh, and get it all painted and everything and then put it all together after it's all painted 
Um, 95 links per side, uh, building our track links, you've seen me do that a million times. Um, I actually enjoy doing tracks, I enjoy putting a video on YouTube or something, a documentary, sitting there listening and cutting them all off and cleaning them all up, it's lovely. Um, I guess I'm crazy. So, straight into the top of the hull. Now you may choose, when you're looking through here, you may choose to add the top of the hull to the bottom of the hull first and then do all this work. Because once you've got all this stuff on there, if you need to tape it or clamp it or put rubber bands around it or anything, you're not going to break any of it off if it's not on there. So I would be tempted to glue the top of the hull to the bottom of the hull and then start all your assembly like this. And bearing in mind at this stage as well, I wouldn't have the wheels on the tracks on there. So basically adding in our periscopes here, there's a tiny little aerial type looking thing. And then there's a little, um, that's like a fuel filter or a fuel connector for this molded on fuel tank. Then we've got some lifting eyes here. It looks like they've got the welds around the bottom, which is a nice touch. That, I don't know what that is. It's some sort of post and there's another one there. Um, some kind of adjustment thing, I'm guessing. And then we've got a PE part going on top of that hatch. We've got the driver's cupola there, if you can call it a cupola. And that's going on to the top of the hull there. Obviously no interior detail whatsoever, so you may wish to um, just glue all this shut to start with. And then we've got our Land Rovers here. Um, and we're adding toolboxes. And there's the exhaust. I don't see any fuel tanks. There's a fuel tank there. I'm not sure if that's a fuel tank or a toolbox. And I'm not sure what this is here. I'm not sure if that's a cubby holes or whatever. And then we've got some little parts here. I'm not sure they are. They must be track links, I'm guessing. Is it spare track links? Not too sure. And we've got... Yeah, I think that's track links. And then uh, we've got parts here going on. This is going to be pulleys and stuff for our winches. All going on, adding them onto the Land Rovers. And then, um, as I say, do this beforehand. And then we're going to build up our engine cover with the PE hatches and stuff, which is nice. Well, not the engine cover, it's actually the transmission cover at the back. But um, that's where the radiators go. And then we're going to add our Land Rovers onto the sides of the hull. Again, there's the engine cover there going on there. All these tanks, the T55, T62, even the T90, they all sort of have the same kind of build up. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that. Um, then we've got a hell of a lot of greeblies here going on and uh, that's absolutely amazing. And we've got a lot of parts here that it looks like we could have them moving. Now it's not telling us not to glue any of this, but when you look here, you've got F35, F37, F31 and J10. It looks like you could put that together and just put a tiny drop of glue either side and that would pivot. Now, not sure what it is, if you'd have any vantage in it pivoting. I like to have things moving if I can. One, ease of painting. You could swing that up, paint under it, swing it back, paint, paint the front of it. Guaranteed good, um, good coverage on your paint. You're not going to see the plastic thrown through. Two, if you decide to build a diorama with this, if you have movable items, you can set the model how you want to, rather than have to decide how it's going to be set from square one. So, um, yeah, if you can have moving parts, I would go with it. And it looks like here you can have all this stuff here moving. Whatever it is, I'm not sure what it is. I don't know this vehicle at all. I just saw it and wanted it. Um, again, we've got lots of greebies going on here. We've got the um, the earth earth binding part here. It's not a blade, is it? It's an earth, it's what they put into the earth to, to, to anchor the, the thing into the ground. Ground anchor, that's what you're going to call it. And it anchors it into the ground and then they can pull, drag a tank out of a, out of a ditch or whatever with their winches and it stops it dragging along the ground. So over the page here, we've got many, many more greeblies and bits and pieces. We've got pulleys here, which are going to look lovely. The trumpeter have made them in two parts, which is a nice touch. And then we've got winch, um, winch parts here. We've got some pulleys here. There's some... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I always forget the name. We've got some more rollers there. Well, that's going to go into there. Um, and then we've got some boxes here going on. Not exactly sure why that's shown there is like that. And then that's got, is there, is there a mesh around it or something and it's missing? Not exactly sure what that is. Um, maybe that's the mount for the crane. I'm not sure. And then we've got the parts here. Not again. Not sure what this is until we actually get into the plastic and start building and having a look. And then we've got all our cables here and it's giving us all the lengths 
and different lengths we need of the cables and it's telling us to use 0.6 brass wire now I'm not sure what the wire is like let's just have a very quick look and yes although it's calling it brass wire it's not wire it's actually like a, a brass thread it looks very flexible and uh, very realistic when uh, painted and weathered up um, then we've got the clamps here these are going to be holding the, the cables down um, and it's telling us here you can see you've got these one to five down here and then it's telling us how to fit them and where they all go so that's going to look incredible that all plastered and all these cables hanging off everywhere then we've got our machine gun so we're building up the machine gun and then we've got another hatch here now this hatch has got interior detail I don't really see the point in adding it because you're not going to see any of it um, but then you've got the machine gun going onto that hatch and then there's a spotlight behind it then we've got our ditching ditch or unditching log here and we're going to build up the clamps uh, all made with PE so they're going to look very realistic boxes here going on this is trays to put stuff in so toolboxes there with lifting eyes so obviously it can lift its own boxes on or on I should imagine um, then we're going over here and it's telling us we're using more cable now to actually um, connect up the the crane now not sure what this cable is like one of the biggest issues with 35th scale cranes and stuff is when it hangs down you want the hook to look heavy and of course the trouble is most wire when it's like 0 0.6 0 0.8 diameter it doesn't want to hang straight down vertically so sometimes you can add a bit of lead weight into the hook or have it holding something like an engine and put a bit of lead in that um, just to sort of give it a give the wire a straight heavy look there's nothing worse than having the hook hanging and the wire is all bowed up because it's not uh, not laying flat so now we're into the crane assembly so this is telling us how to do this but obviously we need to build all the crane up first before we can do all this or do it at the same time now we've got some lovely pulleys here they're, they're going to look very nice three-part pulleys and then we're putting all this together again it's, it's not telling us not to glue anything but I would not glue you know, it's telling us not to glue those two and that's about it um, so obviously that's going to run up and down that track so that's going to give you your your movement there so it's telling you not to glue that in so that's pretty cool then we've got these hydraulic cylinders now again um, I would be tempted to put this on and not glue it and then you could have that moving around if and when I build this or not if when I build this um, I will see about putting some sort of friction aid in there maybe a rolled up piece of paper or something so they don't just fall in and out they'll actually slide up and down with a tiny bit of resistance so you could lift the crane up and it will stay there um, we're adding some hydraulic hoses to the to the cylinders there by the look of it um, and then we've got some little parts going on here again they're not saying not to glue it but if you don't glue it it's all going to move and again with these parts here don't glue that it's going to move um, and then we're going to glue all this into the actual um, crane arm it's crane jib itself and again we've got this pulley here now it's telling us to glue that in and I'd be tempted not to glue that in there because I've got a feeling that where's the box I've got a feeling that might come down and glue onto the bottom and actually the crane jib will move away from it so we'll, we'll have a look and maybe not glue that in there but we'll have a look when we come to build it and we've got some more cylinders here again I wouldn't glue them pulleys again don't glue them in let everything be free turning and moving about and then we're going to glue the this box here down onto the base so yeah they're telling you to put that in there if you don't glue it it will lift up so um, that is what I would do because this part here this base you're going to flip it over glue it to that base and then you'll lift that up and the the base of this will stay in there and then as you lift it up those hydraulic cylinders will extend so that is what I'd be tempted to do or well, that is what I will do we've got some pipe work going on here which is a nice touch um, again it's to L27, L28 and B40 don't glue L27 to L28 and then the crane will swivel uh, we're going to build up our hook here again um, don't glue I don't know why that's two parts don't glue that onto there um, if you can get away with it because you want them to move if you can so um, yeah if you can get those moving that would be good because then the, the actual hook will swivel as well 
and that's going to attach to those cables there um, and those cables are actually hanging up there being strung up on the sides so um, that's pretty cool and one thing I did miss I didn't tell you it's telling us here to cut it to 800 millimeters long so it's quite a long old cable then we're coming over the page and we've got another winch pulley assembly sort of thing here um, and then we're going to add our actual crane on got some bits and pieces there's a light there with some guards on it some more rollers for the winches um, that's like a, a shrouded light there by the look of it then we've got our toolboxes and stuff going on um, whatever that is that looks like some sort of perhaps light or speaker or something um, and then we've got a light going on the back there by the look of it some more pulleys and stuff for the winches and then we've got fuel tanks being assembled here again as I say in all my kits when you start building this look for assemblies like this get them off the sprues glue them together put them in the box and then when you come to use them the seams will be good and hard and ready for sanding down and you won't get sinkage um, lights there which are very nice uh, with clear lenses which is cool so that's all going to look you know pretty good against the, the dull green or whatever you're going to use or something's going to add a bit of interest to it and then adding the tanks onto the back and we've got some little PE brackets there which are going to go over our fuel lines and it's telling us here to use the the duct so that's the uh, that'll be vinyl tubing which I'm sure is in here yes there it is that's your vinyl duct so you may choose to use lead wire or something because you can't get the the nice bends on that ducting without it kinking or indeed you could put some wire at the inside of it if you want to and then we've got the uh, this is the snorkel you're going to assemble the snorkel and that's just going to sit on the side here um, or I'm guessing you could actually if you wanted to in some way have it on uh, have it on the tank or mount it onto the hull so that it's actually showing it in use I did actually do a little bit of research earlier on Google and I saw a picture of one of these sat there with its snorkel and its uh, crane extended so there we go that's that's all through the uh, 20 pages and I'm sorry that went on so long but there's a lot to talk about in this kit it's a beautiful model by the look of things um, let's have a look at the sprues sorry guys I talked about looking at the sprues I didn't show you the color call out so as I said earlier we've got four options with this one so we've got that's interesting oh, I thought I was going to tell you to cut it but it's not um, so you've got here on this side we've got plan views side views front and rear and then we've got some detail views here so we can see this is the um, the brown the brown black and green camouflage um, we've got Mr Hobby colors Acrovision Vieco Model Master Tamiya and Humbrel so um, nice to see that Trumpeter aren't going the route of just giving you one manufacturer's paints because they're sponsored or whatever. It's nice to see they're doing this. But as usual, as I always say, not many colours in the Tamiya range suit. But it seems that Mr Hobby have always got a full full house in there. So um, there's the green, black and grey rather than the green, brown and uh, black. Um, again, we've got these arms here and it's telling you that they should be painted in in red and white just show you that close up so you can see what I'm talking about I'm not exactly sure what those arms are um, I guess we'll have a look I will know by the time I build it and then we've got the um, on this side here we've got C and D which are the the darker green so they're telling you this one 309 which is forest green which is the darker green and this one's 303 which is the lighter green so I'm not sure which one of those is correct for the time or whatever. I'm sure somebody can tell me in the comments, but uh, I don't know why they would be two different greens. So now we'll have a look at the sprues. Right, so we'll start with this bag here. I'm going to put the light back in a good place. And we'll get it down. So these are actually taped together. Trumpeter are probably the most thoughtful manufacturer when it comes to packaging um, mind you say that I think the best package kit I've ever seen was the um, AMK MIG 31 if you haven't seen that kit go take a look the boxing of it is absolutely amazing and also the um, Hobby Boss 177 scale Dora that's pretty incredible as well so we'll put that one back on there so this is sprue L not that it matters 
but it is sprue L. And <clears throat> we can see here we've got some very, very crisp moulding. A little bit oily, as usual. But um, yeah, very, very crisp moulding. Extremely crisp, very sharp, very clean. Just what you'd expect from a first release of a brand new tool kit. And uh, yeah, as I always say, I, I like to get kits. Um, as soon as I see it, I want it. I get it um, from the first, from the first few, you know, from the first few shots. So yeah, lots and lots of detail on there. Obviously, got the top of the hull. Um, lots and lots of holes and slots and stuff. There's a lot to go on there. With a weather oil and a dry brush in, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. Perhaps some dust and and dirt and stuff on it. It's going to look great. Um, these here, I'm guessing they're toolboxes for all the equipment they would have to carry for uh, recovery and stuff. Um, that looks like it's the rear, is that the rear cover for the uh, for the um, engine? And then you put that other panel on top. Here we've got the mount for the crane. So this is going to be a specific sprue to this model. Uh, there will be other sprues in here which are generic to the T72. So just to show you the crispness, if we have a close look up here. We've got some stuff here which is unfortunate. They're moulded on hooks and stuff um, but you can always make those look real take a very very sharp brand new blade with a very sharp point run the blade around the edge and it kind of undercuts it and gives it a look that it's separate um, if I build this on on my channel I'll show you how to do it so there we go there's hatches there and you can see uh, again very very crisp sharp detailing on there and slide molded on the sides to get you those lovely indentations so uh, all in all, lovely. Right, so going on to this sprue here. Now this has been very beautifully packaged, wrapped in bubble wrap, and it's got foam inside it. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you'd rather I just unbagged all this first and then did it, then let me know. But I like to sort of unbag everything as we go, and then if we see any issues with packaging or whatever, then we can look at it. Now that under there, what I'm going to do is take this off. This knife blade's got blunt. That under there looks absolutely gorgeous. Wow, they've got another lot of sellotape on there. But I think this is worth it to show you this. There is the light guard. That is the nicest light guard moulding I think I've ever seen. Really, really nice. So here we've got a lot of very fragile small parts. You see a tiny little hose over here. Uh, this is sprue B. Bit of flash. Um, not not going to lie, there's a bit of flash on here and a bit of mould seams. So um, yeah, I'm wondering if that there is a short shot. No, Nigel, that's the sprue. That's just for protection. I thought that was a short shot. I'll just show you what I was talking about. That looks to me like a short shot, but no, it's just a sprue that's protecting that part there. So we've got some very, very tiny, fragile parts on here, as you can see. And we can see on there there's a bit of flash around the seam line. There's nothing to clean up. A bit of flash in that hole there, look. But um, not going to worry about that. So I should imagine the injection pressures with all this tiny, tiny parts have been quite high. But you can see that light guard there really really nice and then that part there has been uh, slide molded as you can see it's given you full three-dimensional yeah really really nice now I want to cover that back up I'll do it after right so now we've got the Land Rovers So looking absolutely lovely, again very very crisp, very very sharp. I would imagine this is a generic T72 sprue. Um, there's the rear rear cover for the engine there, um, some bits and pieces, there's some covers there, that's the engine cover, another engine cover there, this is the radiator grills go on top of there. And then we've got our two Land Rovers here which are very very crisp and they've also got moulded on detail underneath. A couple of very small ejector pin marks there. They'll sand out or fill in no time. 
um, yeah really crisp really lovely uh, just show you the detail on there close up so you can see it's all very nice and underneath once again you've got the uh, the opposite so good job trumpeter you've done really well here very lovely indeed and we've got there some numbers and we've got um, 09553 and that's certainly not this kit so that's probably a generic sprue and then moving along we have this sprue here again with uh, protection on it always wear your protection and again we've got some very very fine parts here this is I think this is the um, the spring and hinge arrangement for the uh, for the engine cover we've got the, the blade there again we've got the snorkel here unfortunately we've got these molded on uh, steps here which which obviously fold down um, again we can sharpen those up and make them look like they're separate so yeah really nice really really nice molding very very crisp very very clean and very very sharp shoe close up again a massive hook some very very fine parts here really really nice and then we've got a one of our smaller sprues here this is unusual for trumpeter it's sellotate very unusual so are these mirrored yeah these are two sprues the same so um we've got here is our pulleys again very very crisp and clean um we've got eyes there for our for our um, cables and they again they're slide molded so you've got the holes there to push the cable into drop a super glue on the cable bump in it goes job done um, or better to put the super glue in there otherwise the super glue all gathers up when you push the cable in drop super glue in the hole push the cable in uh, fuel tank mount is there by the look of it and again obviously we've got all these pulleys and little brackets and stuff again those pulleys are looking lovely very very crisp very very sharp so we've got a toolbox here by the look of things or cubby box or whatever you call it there we go and um, basically you've got the base there and then you've got the sides these will be the outsides and then we've got some more toolboxes and stuff there We've got ejector pin marks on the inside. Um, not sure if they're going to be visible because you may be putting something inside this. Um, we'll have to see when we come to build it. But if you have to sand them out, we have to sand them out. I would imagine of late with Trumpeter's um, fantastic uh, ability to, to make stuff without ejector pin marks, I would imagine they won't be visible. So that's how I'd imagine that's going to go. Another pair of sprues here. Again, these are mirrored. So these are, again, as I say, mirrored. So you've got two of them. And we have got, again, more pulleys for all the winches and stuff. We've got our hydraulic cylinders, which are slide molded. So the inside of those will be nice and smooth, but they may have a, well, they're gonna have a draft in them. Draft is basically the angle to allow the mold tool to pull out. So we'll have to look at um, how we're gonna make this, this friction I was talking about. Um, yeah, some lovely, lovely crisp mold. And there's our fuel tank halves. Um, so again, some tiny little pulleys down there. Whatever these things are. Um, yeah, lovely. Really, really nice. Crisp, clean, flash free. Oh, little tiny bit of flash on there, look. But uh, yeah, very nice. Worth every penny. So here we've got the, the main crane jib so put that there so we can see molded in one piece um, something that was pointed out in the bear hobbies uh, review this here 
That is literally just a piece of metal. You can see that close up here. That is literally just a strip of metal hanging down and it basically as the crane lifts up obviously it's going to stay hanging vertical and it will change its its attitude uh, a, a court, relative, relative to the actual jib but well, they've molded it on there at like a 45 degree angle so if that was actually in the slow position that would be hanging down vertically and then if it was as it lifted up the it would hang down so that is basically showing it at sort of you know roughly 45 degrees I'm guessing so to have accuracy in that area there you need to either cut it off and remake it vertical or have it actually on a pivot and moving like the real thing does but um yeah that was something that was was picked up and uh yeah again slide molded and lovely but that's a shame that's a real shame um another sprue here we've already looked at those Here we now onto the this is bound to be generic T72. Not even the ger generic across more than just the T72. And again, mirrored sprues. So I think we've got four of these. Yes, we have this. There's another two there. So here we've got our wheels, which are beautifully molded. We've got some um, hub covers there, swinging arms. Um, not sure what they are, but they're little bits and pieces and they're slide molded. Um, tiny little, what looks like tie downs. Some clamps there for the cables. And some pivots there for something or other. But yeah, sprue A1, so that's obviously going to be um, generic. Yes. So. Funny they've actually scrubbed that number out by the look of it. Um, but yeah, lovely detail on the wheels. And we've got the, the mould lines on the tyres. There is a, a, a mould seam around the middle, which is going to be an absolute dodder to sand off. None of that dafty tread pattern they put on these days. But there we go. You can see the detail on those wheels. It's lovely. If you're into your Russian trumpeter models, you'll have seen all this before. But yeah, really, really nice. Really, really lovely. Very pleased with this. So we've got four of those. Then we've got this simple sprue here, which is looking like it's kind of covers for something or other. Uh, that's going to be covers for the snorkel. That's the end covers for the snorkel. Nice uh, vinyl effect on there. Track links. I don't need to get these out. We've all seen these track links before. We've got three sprue connection points on each one. So I'll cut them out, put them in the pot, and then we'll just sit there, as I say, listen to a documentary, watch a film or something clean them all up and then get them all glued together then here we've got the main hull again lovely protection on there to protect these little corner pieces here so beautiful detail underneath um, Got the raised side there and then this side is flattened off but yeah really really nice not sure if this is actual yeah this is particular to this kit because you've got it in there 135th brem 1 09553 so that is the kit number yes yes so uh, yeah lovely detail on there really really nice you can see there's the injection point there and there's another injection point there so they'll have to be just cleaned up which should be no problem whatsoever really nice then we've got some poly caps which is a really nice touch for putting your wheels on then we've got some slide molded parts here that's your pivot for your crane uh, I'm not sure what these bits are and then there's some more toolboxes and stuff there then we've got our cable let's have a look at this see what it's like so we've got our cable and our vinyl now that's got hooked on there somehow so we'll have to look at both together but the cable looks to be yeah very poseable so you can pull it straight and it will stay pretty much straight um, you can pose it around and it stays in shape so that's a good touch now this stuff the problem is with this if you try and go tight corners it kinks no it doesn't wow it doesn't kink now the tamiya stuff you try and do that it just kinks but that's um 
Oh, look at that close up. That's quite incredible. No, doesn't kink. So you can use it. The only trouble is this stuff when you paint it, the paint falls off. So it's got to be a downside to it. Um, so yeah, as far as those fuel lines go on the back, I'd be tempted to use lead or copper rather than the um, rather than the vinyl. Let's put those back in there so they don't get all damaged. Which is easier said than done. Here we go. And we've got a sprue here with sprockets. Don't need to get these out. Just you can see there the detail on those sprockets is very crisp, very nice. Through connections on the end of the teeth, which is a nice touch, and uh, yeah, idlers on the back. And then we've got some more sprues here. So this is a this is like a soft vinyl sprue, which I don't understand. That's the ditching log. I don't understand why they've made the ditching log in a soft vinyl. And there's a mantlet for a T72 by the look of it, or mantlet cover. And then we've got some other bits and pieces here. But I don't know why they've made that ditching lock out of vinyl. Seems very, very strange. Maybe it's to get the mould detail without slide moulding it. So the moulds actually come apart because the material's soft. But um, yeah, very strange. Don't know why they've done that. Um, then we've got Go Away. And then we've got another couple of boxes here, snowage boxes going up on the top. Again, slide moulded, so we've got all the, the detail on all, uh, all five sides. Really, really nice. Small little sprue here with our machine gun on. This is probably again going to be generic. Lovely, nice touch. And then we've got a, let's have a look at this one, because we've got some nice detail on this part. tiny little sprue here with um, some boxes on and this is a sort of cover that's going to go on sort of a tread plate you can see we've got the beautiful the beautiful checker plate or the, the diamond plate molding on there which is very sharp indeed again slide molded so you've got the detail on the sides there as well so yeah all in all lovely clear parts Two clear sprues with light lenses and stuff, light lenses and stuff, and periscopes. A sheet of PE, got two sheets of PE, which are both the same. We've got some engine grills there and some tiny little bits and pieces. Tiny little discs there with holes in, little brackets and that. So that's all very nice. And then finally, we've got a generic decal sheet here, which has just got some. Some Russian writing here, some Russian writing here that goes up the side of the jib. And then we've got some um, numbers here. So we've got 121 one if you want to build a Bovington tank. Well, it was 131, one, wasn't it? Um, numbers here, so we've got some generic numbers handy again for the, uh, for the spares box. So that, my friends, is that. And all in all, I am very, very impressed. All in all, a beautiful model. Um, well worth the money. Retails for about £75, I think. Um, but yeah, it's uh, trumpeter kits aren't cheap these days. But I don't think much, much, much at all is cheap these days. Some of the main stuff is getting quite pricey as well. Um, I've actually bought another kit today on Amazon, which hopefully will come tomorrow and I'll review it for you. So uh, look forward to that one. And when I tell you the price, I got it for you, you won't believe me. So anyway, thanks for watching this. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for all the comments you make on the other videos and stuff. Thank you to everyone who um, who contributes to the channel and um, sends money in on uh, PayPal or Patreon. It's very, very much appreciated. And uh, that money for that camera is still building up and I must go and get one. I really must and get away from this bloody iPhone. So anyway, thanks for watching this. Um, hope you've enjoyed it, as I say, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all soon. If you have got any comments about this, please let me know in the comments below. And if you're actually building one or you've built one already, um, send me some photographs at nigelsmodelingbench at gmail.com. So, um, and there's two L's. Nigel's Modelling Bench with two L's in modelling. So, um, see you all soon. Bye for now.